I wrote down a list of fun questions uh, that I want to ask you uh, from a personal perspective. And uh, just curious about like, right? Because when did, when did you guys start Uncle Mike? We started Uncle Mike's. Uh, our first disclosure was at the end of April. Um, we did some, you know, some jobs for friends and family, kind of getting systems in place. And then we, we, we disclosed the business publicly uh, May 1st, uh, 2023. May 1st, 2023. So you're one year old. We are one year old. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. So do you remember what we met almost a year ago and we set a annual revenue goal uh, or you, you set an annual revenue goal for Uncle Mike. Do you remember what you said? Uh, I believe I said 1.6. And did you get close? We, we beat it. Um, we exceeded our, our first year goal. In fact... We got a head start. So we started working with you, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was July 1 uh, or July 1st was when we sort of engaged each other um, since that date. Right. So we had all of May and all of June before that. But since that date, um, we got to that number. So just since the time we started with you um, shaving two months off the count, we hit that number. So. How I I mean, like, you know, we're happy to take credit for lots of things, but, uh, you know, in no way, shape or form do I think that we I mean, we're 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 a tool, you know, you know, we're we're a part a part of the team. Right. I mean, like, um, so I do I do want to drill down to some numbers, although I do think attribution is really silly. Right. Because sure. I mean. You know, you got that Uncle Mike's uh, home service. I got this. I got this Funnel Pros uh, shirt now because I was like, I wanna, I wanna look like our people. Um, yeah, like, man. Like, where did you get that shirt? This uh, this was one of our first runs. We um, we ordered at the time. We had four guys on the team, um, and we had no budget, so we ordered four shirts. And I'm never, ever, ever going to get rid of this shirt because it was the first one. We overspent. Uh, it's a great shirt. And now we've, we've got, got 10 guys on the team and, you know, we've got to order 20, 20 uniforms at a clip. Do you remember why you went with the company uh, that you went with to get that T-shirt? Ooh, um, it was easy. <laughs> You know, it was something that I had already done before working with that company. Um, I had ordered uniforms through them before. Um, so I just, I went with them. Their graphic design team, you know, was, was easy to get the logo in. I mean, pretty much. I was like, it, it, I, it, this question backfired because like the, I, because you were using this company before, but like the basic idea is like most people don't know, I think, why they bought what they bought like it sure. just happened so it's like if it's like when you try to attribute you know how did this thing end up on my desk right how did how did this ink this kawako ink end up on my desk it's like what form of marketing brought me there it's like i, I don't remember yeah what was what was the, what was that customer journey like what was the customer journey right yeah i mean and like yeah. trying to break it down into numbers is really silly but i mean We'll try to do it anyway. I mean, um, but first, I wrote down this list of questions. We're gonna do this in a half an hour. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna pile through this. Um, what has been your most memorable experience over the past, over your first year of uh, starting this business? That's that's a great question. Um, we've had a lot of experiences starting a business in a competitive market. Um, it's been very, very up and down and sideways. So, you know, I think the most memorable thing for me was, you know, there was a moment when we were doing 
four or five installs a week. Uh, we had just ramped up the business and we ran into our first warranty situation. This sounds a little weird because the most memorable is when something went terribly wrong. And when something went terribly wrong, I'd always said, we're going to surround ourselves with the right people. We're going to surround ourselves with people that care about doing the job right, care about taking care of the customer, no matter what it takes, no shortcuts. And I'd always thought that I was a good judge of character, uh, that their pedigree was to the point where I could hire them you know, confidently and get them on this team. But I never realized it until that day happened. Uh, and when that day happened, I got to learn everything I needed to know about the core team that we put together here and how they stepped up and stepped in and did whatever it took and left whatever they were doing at nine o'clock at night to go to a customer's house to solve an issue for a customer that we had was the most memorable moment for me. Because that was the moment, um, to be honest with you, and you're, you're a business owner, you have a team that you've got to manage. That was the moment I realized I, I have, I do, I have this team that I can rely on and we're going to pick each other up. We're going to do the right thing. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to not really be judged on anything other than how we handle our mistakes. And I was, I was really proud and really impressed with the way that my team pulled together to fix something that was a problem. That was the most memorable experience. So seeing your team step up to the plate in a way that you hoped they would, but then you actually saw it has been the most memorable memorable experience. And it was for, 100%. you said it was for a warranty issue? What did you say? Correct, yeah. We installed a, 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 an Ecotech Combi boiler. That boiler handles the domestic hot water as well as the heating for the home. Previously, the customer had a boiler and a hot water heater we were able to condense that space from this in a, in a utility closet down to this, you know, and they were able to, you know, now, you know, utilize that for other things that they needed. They were very happy. Uh, and we had a manufacturer's defect, very rare, but it does happen. Came off the line with a defect inside the system. Uh, gas valve was uh, incorrectly manufactured at the company. Um, a leak occurred and... When I say we took a situation that, you know, could, could you, you'd see grown men quiver uh, having to go back and, and talk to the customer and settle the problem. I saw men and women become just heroes, you know, down to the, a person on our team that took the call. Yeah, that's a tough call to take. Um, it is. Yeah. Uh, we've had the same thing. We're like something will malfunction in a big way. And when something automated malfunctions, oh boy, it's scary. One of our, one yeah. of our, one of our, uh, workflows once, whenever somebody wrote, please don't call it triggered a call. And like, uh, so we sent out like, this is when we were first getting started. We sent out like, you know, launched a workflow with like 6,000 people in it. And every time somebody said stop or no, or don't call, it triggered a call only on those people. This is actually why we started the business because afterwards I, I was talking to the business owner <coughs> and I was like, man, I am sorry. And he was like, sorry about what? That was our best day of business we've ever had. And so I was like, oh man, like all we have to do is get this right and this could really turn into something. Okay. Um, you don't have to answer this, um, and I, I won't publish this anywhere if you don't want, uh, but I thought it would be really funny to ask if you would be willing to share your worst customer experience thus far uh, and the biggest shit show that's happened. Okay. Well, uh, you know, fortunately for me, the worst customer experience is don't ever turn into shit shows, to be honest with you, because they let me know that we're not the right fit. To work with each other right away um you know i think in the beginning like every business owner you take on every job you can and you try and do everything uh and then you start to realize that there are certain people you want to work with and certain people you don't want to work with and affording yourself the luxury to make those decisions is not when you're doing well it's knowing when to make that decision so that you can continue to do well um i don't have any experience with a current customer of mine that 
was my worst experience. We've had problems. We've had to come up with solutions. We've had to make good. Okay. Um, but those are never uh, the worst experiences. We brought on a guy that had been in this industry for 15 years as a service technician. And the first week, he said, you have the greatest customers. I've never seen anything like this. And I think it starts from how we talk to them on the onboarding, how your team talks to them, how everybody works together. Um, So I really haven't had that. I will say I have had experiences where, you know, we've had to go back to a job where something happened um, with an overhead system. So an overhead system, we were installing an overhead system, meaning you've got two guys in a 140-degree attic working their tails off, getting grumpier by the minute. We brought this kid on, and I I can call him a kid because I'm I'm older now. We brought this 26-year-old kid, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful installer, and it was his first day. And he was so excited to join our team because he knows the guys we have on our team. And we're doing this job and he's showing us that he can do it. And he takes one wrong step and goes right through the customer's ceiling into their living room. First, <laughs> so the first thing that happened was, is he okay? It like, forget about everything else. Is he okay? He was totally okay. Nothing happened. You know, the biggest concern is those drywall screws and something cutting him and, and all of that. He just was mostly uh, slightly bruised and very embarrassed. So, so we had to obviously call um, a, a team to come in to patch the ceiling and everything like that. The customer was completely okay, uh, obviously startled by the situation, but that would have probably been the experience where we were just like, oh my goodness, that's that's insane. As far as customers, though, to be honest with you, Greg, I wish I had a better answer for that question. The only time I have a bad experience with a customer is when I have to tell them, you know, no matter whether you want to do this job or not, I don't think we're the right fit. Fair enough. So to drill into numbers now, uh, what is the total revenue over the year? What if you feel comfortable, you know, sharing it? No, that's Uh, okay. What is the total revenue from uh, that you that you would attribute to Funnel Pros? yeah, that's it. That's it. And how much? Okay. Have you, and how much have you spent? So, how much have you spent? How much have you made? What's been the ROI? You know what? You know, to all of the people that basically comment on our ads, all of the other marketers that are like, "You guys are a scam." You got, and I never reply. Um, every once in a while, they say something, and I reply, and I'm like, "What am I doing? Stop replying." Yeah, they're trolling no, me. I'm feeding. I'm feeding the fire. So. All right, let's start here. Um, let's just take a look really quick, if you don't mind. Um, I pulled a report this morning, and I just want to slide over here and see if I can see it. But it appears to be, let's say, two, four, seven, nine, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's call it nine. So. In the course of a year, give or take the exact number, and I apologize that I don't have this exact number. So what I'm going to say is, in the course of a year, we have 55800 and then 700 times 9. Okay, so we have spent roughly around $70,000 with your team. Um, I think it's probably somewhere between 60 and 70,000 to be exact. Um, Some of that was the early onboarding stuff. And then we upgraded um, with your services once we were very, very happy with the results. Um, Attributing that back to what you have been able to bring in for us, um, I attribute close to $600,000 to that. So we've spent about $70,000. I do come from a marketing background, so some of that is included in that onboarding phase, right? The the patience of building this out, learning each other, what we want to do with our offerings, how we want to put it into the market, and then when it starts to come back. Um, I can tell you that when you look at that number as a whole, you know, that's a really good return. We're we're very happy with that return. Our goal was eight to 10X as always, um, and, and that return is really satisfying. But 
what's been incredible is the amount of return we've gotten now a year later. Okay. So just put it this way. I spent $7,000 with you guys last month. Okay. I attribute $170,000 of business that we did last month directly coming from your funnel. That's so you and I knew it was going to take time. We knew this was something that we had to build for the future to see that come into play makes you guys look really smart, makes me look really smart to my team, and it helps us help as many customers as we can. So, I, you know, the returns are growing exponentially. I'm happy to say that um, we are now scaling. We are now bringing on um, two, you know, two more install teams, two more salespeople, two more techs. And we expect to start investing in funnel pros two to three X as well. We're into that. Um, this is, yeah, well, of course, yeah. I mean, look, <laughs> it's, it's not always a success story, but when it is, you got to celebrate the wins. Um, we've, from the moment we started working together, um, my, my partners are extremely intelligent, extremely mechanical. They are masters in what they do. They've never touched a drop of advertising or marketing spend in their lives. Okay. Um, that's a, always a scary endeavor to take on, right? Because as I try to describe to them, it's not, it, it's not a faucet you turn on. Uh, you, 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 you start by turning on the faucet and then you start filling buckets, and these buckets take a long time to fill, but when they're full, you now have this feedstock of leads coming into you. You now have you now have this feedstock of consistent marketing messaging. You now have this feedstock of consistent brand awareness. Those are the things that take time, but what you see is you start to see this growth, this growth that starts happening in connection with the marketing spend. Uh, and that's what we've seen so far. So it, maybe that's a little long winded, but overall, in our first year, we did one point six three million dollars. Um, we were shooting our our reach goal was one point six. That was our reach goal. Um, so we hit that number. And like I said, I attribute overall close to six hundred thousand dollars to Funnel Pros in that first year. And I have to say this again. Last month, let's be very clear, we spent $7,000, we got a $170,000 return. That's fucking, that's awesome, man. I am so, so happy about that. And I wanted to show you, I don't know, I don't know if you ever peek in our, into the funnel, but <clears throat> I wanted to show you this. Um, I made a, I went into I, I happened to find this and I was so excited when I when I did find it um, yeah Siobhan right I got I still got the, the name pulled up here so this person <clears throat> came in on August 31st they received open the you know got your request all of that um, then they ghosted us essentially. Uh, they, you know, then they got a message and by the way, like people like this is all automated, right? There's like, you know, we have task reminders and in there for like manual calls and then we have voicemail drops, but I mean, nothing here, you know, then an outbound call, a voicemail, nothing, uh, two hours later, not, or uh, uh, 30 minutes later, two hours later. Um, later on on that, uh, later on in that day, nothing now, September 1st rolls around the voicemail, nothing. Uh, you know, I had a moment and thought to briefly check in with you to see when would be a good time to chat. N nothing, nothing. Now we're on September 5th, more follow up, Uh, and then we see, uh, on September 21st or I don't remember, know what date this went out, but a brand new offer goes out, uh, a couple more voicemails. We're on September 22nd now. And then finally, we get the uh, the response, uh, right? Sorry, don't need service anymore. Um, this person came from a Facebook lead form, probably the worst of uh, leads. <laughs> um, and it's perfect. Highest per job revenue. What's that? Highest per job revenue. 
not the greatest leads, but highest per job revenue. Yeah, takes a it, yes, right. Takes a, a lot of follow up to to get to convert some of them. So they get the perfect thank you. They're DND then do not disturb for a month. Then on October 20th, we send another, you know, the the funnel sends out a message, how you doing? Checking in and an email. Here's a 3 month check-in, making sure everything is cool. November 14th. Now we're yeah, we're from August to November. Another offer goes out. Um, it goes out in the form of an email too. And finally, we get the do you replace an AC unit. Took this person. I think it was like 24 touch points. Um, yes, we do. <laughs> right, and then we get them on the phone. Um, and this this person ended up buying a. No, that's the wrong opportunity. Is this it? No. No. Where the hell is it? Here we go. Here's the opportunity that won. This person ended up buying, uh, uh, tw spent 24000 with you guys. And it's just like, that's a win, right? When like, we did virtually like, you know, I mean, that's like brand awareness, like kicking up for months. Um, anyway, uh, Where's the zoom? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that is the type of thing that I, you know, again, right? I mean, I, I come from a marketing background, but it doesn't mean that that's the hat I can even wear right now. Um, I'm wearing support staff hats. I'm wearing accounting hats. Um, I'm going out today to hold a ladder, right? I mean, these are things when you're growing a business or running a business, you can, you can have a touch on, but I can't do that. I can't do that. We can't do that on our own. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people miss when they invest in a, a funnel or in a partnership with a team like you guys is it's not just this way. Well, yeah, you know, we'll throw a couple ads out there. Uh, and if somebody responds, our call center will try and book them. It's no, we're going to target. We're going to retarget. We're going to retarget again. And when you're busy doing all the other things that you're doing, we're busy doing this. It's automated. We have systems in place. But how many times are you going to be able to follow up on somebody like that while you're running your business? The answer is not many. 24 touch points is not something we're capable of doing um, while we're running this business. And like you said, that turned into a two system change out. Um, very happy customer. And now we've got that customer because we fulfilled our end of the bargain and went and did a great install, very good customer service, clean, cleaned up, took care of the customer, and then followed up with them to make sure their system was running well before this summer. And we've got a customer for life and, and a, a, a very high potential for referral business. I didn't even touch on the referral side of things, okay? So I'd have to really dig in deep here, Greg, but... It's not just the customers you've bought that I can look at and pinpoint, right? There's a residual value to this type of growth. And it, it, if you're doing the right job on your end, meaning my end, then that referral business is going to grow as well. And, you know, you can't take that away from this teamwork, right? That's, that's a testament to all of us doing the right things to get into a home and then us taking that ball and running it over the goal line and scoring that touchdown so that that person says, oh, you need somebody? I've got somebody. I mean, we're, we're a year old. To get referral business like we've been getting, um, you know, with our customer base is, is everything. It's, a, it's been incredible. It's been absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, you guys have done uh, uh, an, an amazing job. Um, I know we're almost out of time, and I had all these really fun questions that I... I let's had. go. Let's speed round. You know, what do you got? All right. So let's see here. Um, you talked about how you're going to, uh, well, I don't know if you can talk about this on the books, but you're, uh, you said you're acquiring a new business, maybe we are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we are, we are acquiring a plumbing business. Um, we are in the final stages of, you know, the discovery process. This guy sees what we're doing. Uh, finally, let me get my grubby little hands on his books, which, you know, it's not always easy to hand over, um, but that means he's serious. So we took a look. Um, the reason we're able to do that, and I'll be really quick. The reason we're able to do that is because we have other systems in place. 
okay? Our CRM is not his CRM. He doesn't have uh, our marketing funnel when we introduce offers in plumbing. He doesn't have that built yet. We spent a year together building that. So that infrastructure allows us to go and grab a, a plumbing company. We're also in talks with uh, a really great electrician who also just needs help on these systems and processes that we already have. So Uncle Mike's plan from day one was to be able to help you in your home from the roof all the way to the basement. Um, we started with HVAC. That's where our license is. That's kind of what we knew. Um, and, and now we're getting into plumbing uh, and electrical work and uh, power washing and the like. So, And when you get into roofing, that's it. Game over. We, that's it. That's it. We have a we we have a roofing um, relationship with three different roofers that we've been working with for the past ten or fifteen years. Um, so we can, you know, provide roofing. What we are doing with a lot of our customers right now um, is we are steering them towards trusted tradesmen, uh, and then those trusted tradesmen are like, "Well, how do I just join you guys? How do I just come on with you?" Dude, you know what I just realized? I was sharing, I was wanted to show you that uh, text message thread, the, all of that funnel thread. I realized I didn't even share my screen. Did I share my screen? I didn't. No, that's okay. I'm a moron. Um, that's exciting, man. That's exciting. Yeah, roofing, uh, it's like, if I were to start a new business, I'd probably start a roofing business because I just, I love the hustle. I love the sales, like the door knocking, the canvassing. It reminds me of old school when I used to, uh, you know, promote concerts and theater and, and comedy, you know, just wild posting all over the, the, you know, all over the street, you know, dropping flyers and cafes. Like, I love that type of marketing. I love it. It's my, my favorite. If you're going to run that business, you just got to remember that all the calls that come in from nine to five have to do with work. And everything that comes in after that, you are a psychiatrist. That's any, any job that I have ever done that's been the case <laughs> yeah yeah all right uh what's uh where do you want to be in, in one year very briefly you kind of already touched on it sure yeah i mean we're we're shooting for 100 percent growth um we want to be at 3.2 million um that's our goal for the next year um revenue wise um you know i i think that's ambitious but that's how we play this game we we go for a, a reach goal um, it's going to take a really big winter to get us there. And that's always a little bit, you know, dependent on weather more than anything else. Um, and then our other goal, you know, that isn't financial is we're, we're spending 2024 on systems and processes, um, and just sort of mapping out this, this sort of future that we're growing with our business so that our employees are happier, um, our, our customers are happier. Our speed of operations is faster. Um, these are these are the things that we're going to be focused on because, you know, to get to that next plateau, um, our, our goal over, you know, the next two years is to get to five, right? So that's always been our goal. First three years was to get to five million um, and, and sort of, you know, fuel the jets from there. Yeah, it's a lot harder to get from uh, zero to two hundred thousand dollars, also, than it is to get from you know, let's say one point six to three. I mean, you know, when you've already crossed, you've already done the hard part, essentially. Um, what kind of marketing advice would you give to an HVAC business owner doing under, let's say, five hundred thousand dollars? Sure. Um, just like anything else, right? You're in this industry. You know what it takes to get on, let's say, a good employee. And you know that to get a good employee, you're going to have to take time. You're going to have to work with them to make sure that those processes are your processes, that they have the right tools, that they have the right training. You're going to have to train them up. All of that takes time. And you're willing to do that because you're really good at that. You understand that when you take a guy on, he could be a project that six months from now, he's out in his own truck. And that truck's now earning revenue for you. It's the same with when you get into marketing, when you want to build something like a funnel or you want to start marketing, you have to understand that it's a process and there's equilibrium that you are going to get to at some point. But in the beginning, 
It's more going out than is coming in. That is the hardest thing to swallow. And it's the lead that I think everybody buries, right? And I don't bury the lead with anyone at any time. That is the lead. In the beginning, more money is going to be going out than coming in. And then you're going to reach equilibrium. And then you're going to start to see the, the, the efforts and everything come back to you in the form of return on your investment. But I think everybody is way too quick um, to pick the partner that they want to go with, right? I think they are way too quick to pull the ripcord when they don't see results quick enough. And I think you have to look at this as a long play, a very patient long play. Um, you know, you, some of your offers are going to fall flat. Don't be egotistical about that. That's okay. Some of your, you know, design work or something might fall flat. That's why you bring on teams to A-B test things. Um, sometimes you're going to have to look at marketing just like you would look at anything else in your business. That if I invest the time and I invest the money, I'm going to see a return on that investment. It's just going to be a matter of time. Other than that, you know, it's a diminishing return when you cut your advertising. It always has been. It always will be. When you tighten your belt as a company and you cut out the thing that is going to be feeding your business, you're starving yourself. And um, everybody knows that in any situation, you know, even in an airplane, right, you've got to put the mask on yourself first before you help anybody else. You need to feed your business so that you're strong enough to go and if you have to cut somewhere else or whatever it is, that's fine. You'll survive that. But you're not going to survive cutting off your feedstock. Yeah, I had this problem, you know, this challenge also when I was starting our, our business. You know, I seeded all the money for us. And um, we were losing like $15,000 a month for like <laughs> like four months, right? And like everyone I was working with, our whole team was like, are we going to be all right? I was like, you don't worry about the money, okay? The money will come. You just keep doing what you were hired to do. Like, yeah. don't worry. We, we're not in the business of not believing in ourselves. We believe in ourselves. We go through. It's not like we're, we're, we're inventing a new flavor of Coca-Cola here. I mean, we're selling, you know, we're selling something that people need, right? It's not like, I hope, is that a new flavor? It's the same flavor. No, it's, exactly. it's, it's my one bite. I don't drink. I don't smoke. But every now and again, I'll have a Coke Zero. I, mine is cigars. I don't drink. I don't yeah. do drugs. Um, I drink a lot of coffee and smoke cigars. All right. But all that aside, all right, let's wrap it up. Um, favorite book? Ooh, okay. That's a really good question. And you're not going to like my answer because nobody ever does. But there's a reason that I have this answer, and I'll just be quick about it. Subterraneans um, is my favorite book By Carol because Wright? I hated it. Yeah. Okay. I because read. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. I started reading it. There was a very attractive young lady that wanted me to read it. And I, at the time, was reading Art of War. Uh, and I needed a break from that. So I started reading Subterraneans. I hated it. I hated the characters. I hated everything about it. And it took me five months to finish it because I would I would put it down. I, I, I would tiny, read and get annoyed book. and then put it down. It's like under 200 pages probably. It's nothing. It's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a nothing burger book. Um, I just kept putting it down and then I would pick it back up. And when I finally finished it, I realized I wasn't supposed to like the characters and I realized I wasn't supposed to like what was going on. And it was that reflection back on how I was feeling and the fact that I didn't enjoy it and the fact that it wasn't some puff book, like, you know, uh, it wasn't the alchemist. It wasn't any of the other popular ones that make you feel really good. And you feel like you learn something afterwards. I, I realized that I I'm pretty sure the author was writing this in, in a way that was like, Hey, this is just, this is just what I'm writing. You don't have to like this, but this is what I'm writing. And uh, that experience kind of changed me because I started to look at, you know, reading content and, and, and looking over things a little bit differently from then on. And uh, I'm selfishly, I'm, I'm just, I'm a little proud that I pushed through 
um, something that I didn't enjoy at the time. I still don't like the book, um, but it's my favorite yeah, book. I, it's I've never like I was not expecting you to drop a Kerouac book, and also like Subterraneans. I mean, because I was a like a beatnik hitchhiker for a long time. That's like not <laughs> even one of his most famous books, right? Like, I mean, you've got Dharma Bums, you've got On the Road, you've got Tristessa, you've got all of these other books that are like even. So that's a really funny answer, and I had that same relationship with Old Man in the Sea by Hemingway. I read this. Yeah. I read that book, and I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" Like, you call that uh, what is it? Uh, first person, or wait, se- uh, third person um, objective? I can't remember what the hell you call it. Um, and if I ever publish this somewhere, some writer is going to be like, "You're a moron." But I mean, yes. it's it's basically <laughs> like where you don't know the feelings of any of the characters. So it's like, yeah. John walks to the boat. The boat was dry. John got into the boat. The waves were rough. The you know the man picked up the the rod. You know he he swung he swung. I was just like this book is terrible. Like how the hell did this guy get famous? Yeah, and I have not stopped talking about that book ever since I read it. I just talk about it nonstop, and I was like, wow. I guess this was a good book because I always think about it. Um, all right, man. And then we're going to end with this question. When you're 80, what do you have hoped to have accomplished? Okay. When I am 80, I have hoped that I have three daughters and I'm going to be as cliche as there ever is. I want my daughters when I'm 80 to remember their father, not for any financial gain, not for having a building named after him. I want them to remember that I was there. I want them to remember that I loved them and their mother and that we lived a very, very happy life exploring things that are free. Yeah, I think that's a good answer. I think um, everything that life has to offer is right here right now and it's like if i i deep down inside it's i know it's like if i can't tap into it right now i won't be able to tap into it ever so it's like not with any additional resources um anyway i think it's a great answer man dude thank you so much i will i I will add just just this one piece of that answer on for you because my daughter just recently turned 10. um and look, we're parents. We think everything revolves around our kids and, and our lives, but they, they don't, but whatever. Um, she recently turned 10. And I asked her, because it's Father's Day coming up, I said, I'm going to write you a letter. I'd like you to write me a letter. You guys don't write letters anymore. I, I'm going to write you a handwritten letter. You're going to write me a handwritten letter. I wrote her a handwritten letter describing to her some of the things that stand out to me in our 10 years together. The things that stood out was learning how to skateboard with my best friend, you know, in the world at our old house, Um, going surfing for the first time, camping uh, uh, in the backyard without a tent. She wrote me a letter back and she wrote those things on there as well. Without talking to each other, without thinking about it, she wrote about the skateboarding lesson she took when she was five years old. She wrote about going surfing um, with me because it, it, it wasn't a, an amazing experience. She, she was terrified by it, but she loved being out there with me and wrote about that. She wrote about some soccer stuff and reading different books together, but she wrote about camping outside without a tent. So the three things, I put a bunch of other things on there, so it, we weren't 100%, but it was just amazing that three things overlapped in our brains that cost us absolutely nothing to do. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, I, you know, back when my grandma was alive, I was going and um, visiting her often. You know, we had a whole bingo crew, uh, and I used to drive all of those chicks around. And by chicks, I mean ninety-year-old women. And um, you know, I used to always ask them advice, right? I'd be like, "So, what's the one thing that I need to know? Like, what you know?" And um, over and over, not over and over, 
I would say two or three times, <laughs> right? Because I only asked this question to like two or three, uh, maybe Dottie, maybe uh, uh, well, my grandma, I always asked it to, Linda, um, said, yeah, w what's the most important thing I need to know? And they would say um, almost in unison, <clears throat> but without hearing the other person's answer, don't work too hard. That's the first thing that everyone said. Don't work too hard. The second thing was um, the only person that's going to be able to make you happy is yourself. Um, and I think the last one was to, uh, I, I can't remember, but I think it was just to uh, enjoy yourself. Yeah. Like, so well, can, I'm going to see my 98 year old grandmother for her birthday this Sunday. I'm going to ask her that question and see what she it's says. It's a great, it's a great question because there's very few people qualified to answer it. Yeah, yeah. You know? I'll ask her again when she's 100. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me know. Let me know what she says. Will do. All right, dude. It's been real, man. Thanks so much for a glowing testimonial. I really appreciate it. It's been an absolute pleasure. You know, you know, working with you guys. I mean, you guys are awesome. And I knew from the day that we met, right? I told my wife, I was like, I met this guy from the Jersey Shore today and they're starting this company. And I think that they're going to like, I, I think that this is going to be a, a an awesome client. And yeah, you just know, I mean, you know, you, you, you know, things like right away. Right. Um, yeah. So I'm just, I'm just super happy that we're still connected, still working together, looking forward to the future. And, uh, and Yeah. Uh, tell your grandmother I say what's up. Greg from Funnel Pro. Will do. Will do, brother. No, thank you very much. We appreciate you too. And hopefully this is something you can scratch up and put together. Use whatever you need. If you need anything else, you let me know. I'm happy to uh, celebrate the success. And, you know, uh, if, if anybody ever wants to talk to me about working with you, send them my way. I will, man. I will. Thank you so much, dude. All right, brother. All right, brother. Enjoy your day. Have a good weekend. Happy Father's Day. Be well. Yeah, thank you, brother.